you know, you mentioned Einstein, a lot of people watching that, you know, have used him. It's like different characters in, in America's history, whether there be political figures that they, somebody will say, well, they had faith, and then critics or skeptics will say, oh, they didn't have faith at all. And Einstein has obviously been controversial in terms of what his remarks were about. But yet, what I love about what you talk about is just the, the understanding or the pointing to something greater. Somebody may not have some great picture of that we have as Christians of what the Christian God and what the God of the Bible is, but they have enough that lets them know there's something greater than themselves. And I think this is the, this is the journey that as scientists as yourself have been on this journey, the more they're seeking, as the Bible promises, you ask, you seek, you knock, you'll find. What do you find today coming from China? You saw the spiritual vacuum in China. Talk about just what it did in China when they tried to remove God as many people want to do in America, let's just get God out of the public, public arena. Talk about what the impact was on China because they did that in China in, in many ways. Talk about the impact. Yes. Um, China, where I came from, is going through unprecedented historical changes. On one hand, there has been explosive economic development. People are living better with more material wealth. But paradoxically, people are feeling more emptiness, spiritually, mentally. Because um, at the time of economic development, the people need actually more spiritual food. You know, clothes you wear, car you drive, is not sufficient. That's just the things in life. But we, as a human being, ultimately, we need to know why we are here. Mm. You know, why God put us on this earth the purpose of life itself. Those are spiritual things. Those are intangibles. And um, so China right now is at an unprecedented historical uh, moment of need, the people need. People need spiritual food at the time of unprecedented economic development. And I, we realize that this is just absolutely astounding. This is a historical opportunity because 95% of uh, Chinese people are not Christians today. 95% of the 1.4 billion people are still not Christians today. Think about it. if we take advantage of this opportunity to spread the word of Jesus Christ, the truth about our lives, to folks in China, we may have an opportunity to recruit for God's kingdom a quarter of human race. It's fantastic. You know, the, uh, when the scripture says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And we quote that in, in all its different ways. But yet when we think about the world that he died for, many times people think about the world that they are familiar with, the color of their skin. And if, if this month, I believe the world population hit 7 billion. And so one way to look at it is if you took 7 billion people and you reduced them down to 7, then you'd have, you'd have at least two Asians, an Indian, someone from Latin America. You'd have um, someone from the Middle East, maybe someone from Africa, and then a Caucasian. I mean, so out, I tell someone from a predominantly white culture, if you'd reduce the world down to 7, there would be probably one white and the rest would be non-white. So we have to realize that, that the world is bigger than maybe our own ethnic bubble. And that could be maybe said in any culture that you're in. People tend to think about just the people that they are familiar with. But yet, like you said, you know, God must love Chinese because he made so many of them. Mm -hmm. So 1.4 billion. That's right. But yet we, as a responsibility as Americans, and, and I am so amazed at God sending people from Asia, from Africa, to America. We used to send the missionaries be the primary mission sending and now we're starting to see the reverse. A lot of people are being sent here from the developing world to share their faith and uh, we believe you're one of those people. So, so excited that you're here. In terms of just your vision for what you see the opportunity in America and the faith, what do you think the challenges are as you look out across America? We talked about China. Talk about as a scientist and as a Christian what it means when you look out across the American landscape. Yes. In terms of China, just to finish that, this concretely what we're doing is to bring Bibles to China with a double translation, Chinese and English. 
and especially to attract the attention of young people in China. Because I truly believe the vitality of Christian teaching is in the young people, the future of a big country like that. In terms of uh, America, I think we are in a, in a time when the whole society is going towards access, access of things. I mean, the best example of access in America today is Las Vegas. You go to Las Vegas, you see neon lights and all these things, and just one word, access. And access, well, does provide material comfort, but does erode our spiritual uh, well-being and health, and does uh, make us lay down our guard that let other things that uh, in influence us, which may not be um, as good. So I think uh, one of the central questions and problem we're facing in America and on a worldwide scale is as modern men and women, how do we, while well, we do have more things, more technology, but still maintain that the purity of human existence, the purity of faith, the simplicity, that, that the access is the road everyone's traveling. It's very easy to travel, but to take the road less traveled, which is go back to the original definition of our human being, of our faith in Jesus Christ. Why we are here, what should we do? And I think that's probably one of the central questions of facing modern men and women in America and in many other countries. Yeah, the excess, um, just thinking that more things will, will, will change our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, when we go on campuses and, and as I go across to the, to, to the university environment, the central issue that comes back to us is that if, you, uh, if you're a thinking person, uh, there's a couple of things. One is that the more, the higher your education, the lower your faith will be, like an inverse correlation. Another thing is, is that there's this presumption that evolution, uh, according to Darwinian evolution, is just an accepted fact. And so those of us who, ex who believe in God as the creator, Christ as the savior and, and redeemer, that somehow that's just some kind of thing that we believe to get along in life. You're a, you're, you're a devout believer. You believe God is the creator and the savior. What do you say to somebody that says you, that, that evolution is, an, is, is a fact, cannot be argued? Uh, anybody that denies that is not a thinking person. What would you say? 